Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Hope you've all had a lovely weekend, or are having a lovely weekend. I've had a busy weekend. I've had my grandson here Friday night. And Saturday we picked up his sister. So we had her here Saturday night. And they both went home today. But, oh my lord, my three-year-old granddaughter. She's unbelievable. Three times she went to bed about quarter past nine last night. Three times she got up out of bed. Third time I put her back into bed. I, I walked out the room and I said, you get out of that bed again, you're going to get big trouble. Be in big trouble. Because I wouldn't mind, when I took her to bed at quarter past nine, I walked up to the bedroom and she'd gone to the toilet first, as usual. And she'd go away. I said, I'm going, I'm going. So I've gone in the bedroom and her brother is in bed. In bed. In bed. Took himself to bed. Right? No problem. Didn't even say, say goodnight to me or anything. Just took himself to bed. Right? I said, come on, Alice is in bed. He's in bed before you. But because she wouldn't settle down and go to sleep, it was disturbing Alice. So Alice in the end got up. And then I, I'll go. He said, but she's asleep. She's asleep, Gran. I said, what did you get up for then? Because she kept crying. I said, but she's asleep now. But then I heard it. I said, she isn't asleep, is she, Alice? He said, no, she's crying. And that disturbed him because he, he, he can't deal with her crying. From, you know what I mean? He just can't deal with it. So he ended up in my bed last night. But um, he's doing well. I think he spent four nights last week in his own bed. They've got him on a, a nighttime chart, a bedtime chart. So when he they set him a goal. I think the goal was three nights last week or something like that. This week, it's four nights. So he's already done four nights last week. So four nights won't be hard for him to do again. He's already done four nights. And then he'll get a treat at the end of the week if he does the four nights. This week, he got a toy. He got to collect, select a toy. Next week, it'll be... Uh, a McDonald's meal. You know what I mean? Things like that. And he works, I, I've said to Tracy, my daughter and I, I said, he works good when you've got him on, um, like a plan. His behaviour is much better when you've got him on a plan. Right, uh, so, the guy start that back up again at school with his a, a work plan. At school and he's got the sleep time plan at home. So we'll see how that goes, but my three year old, God. I thought my daughter was bad at three. But oh my lord, this one she gives my daughter a run for her money. Anyway, I didn't come on over the weekend because as you know, I've just said I had my grandkids. I wanted to, but I thought, no, not doing it, not doing it, because of Elijah Vu. Now, I've covered Elijah Vu on and off. Well, from the beginning, I've covered this case from the beginning. I've shown court dates, even if they've only been there for about three minutes or four minutes. Right? I've shown them, we've looked at, like, where mapping where the blanket was found and the areas they had been searching, the rivers, everything, we've done all that. And I said, it won't be far, it's not going to be far. And they'd gone miles away, miles and miles away. And I thought, it's not going to be far. I really can't see them taking him that far. Because when you look at where two rivers, it's very open land anyway. It's open land, but it's got a lot of heavy forested areas, right? And yes, sadly, 
uh, I believe it was on the Monday, no, the Saturday before, uh, some guy who was getting his land ready for the hunting season, right, because it was on his land, found the skeletal remains. And they did say then it would take a while for the results to come back. And the results came back. And my heart and my thoughts go out to the family. Not the mother. Not the mother. But to his grandparents, his aunts, his uncles. My thoughts go out to them. Because that family, the community, and the Two Rivers Police Department never gave up on this little boy. Never. Okay, they weren't searching as much. They was out searching every day for months at first, for the first three, four months. Every day. They're doing it in two sets. A morning session. An afternoon session. So if you couldn't go on in the morning, you could go in the afternoon. That was fine. They had two search parties going out each day. And they never gave up. And when I heard about this, I was, I was gutted. Right? I was gutted to say the least. But at least now... The family can have some sort of closure. I'm not saying it's going to be full closure, it's not. Well, it never is. There's always going to be that hole left in the heart, always. Because this three year old boy, remember that, three year old boy, whose life was tragically, we don't know how he died yet. But just from some of the evidence we've read and heard about, it's not going to be a happy, it wouldn't be a happy uh, and nice way to die. Put that one right. It wouldn't be nice. He, he was at Jesse Vang's house for eight days. And during those eight days, he was there for punishment, so during those eight days, he was made to stand in the corner, up to three hours at a time. He would have maybe one nappy change a day. One nappy day change. Now, now, you all know if you've had kids, how many nappies would you go through in a day for a three-year-old? Well, a three-year-old really should be toilet trained, right? Or potty trained, at least. And that is down to the mother. That wasn't down to Jessie, that was down to the mother. She failed there. Right? So, but I know a, a three-year-old could go through at least two, three nappies maybe a day. Right? So, this little boy was lucky if he, if he got his nappy changed once a day. And if he filled his nappy, Jesse would put him in a cold shower. If he did something Jesse didn't like, he got threatened with a cold shower. Or he's put in a corner or told to stand at the end of the bed or somewhere for three hours. He's three years old. That poor boy. For the last eight days of his life, you knew nothing but pain. I tell you now, his legs must have been killing him. He's, he must have had so much nappy sores. You know what I mean? Through soil nappies being kept on him all the time. It, oh, I just think what that little boy went through, I really do. And how, I suppose if he cried, he'd get put in the corner again. Stop the crying, get in the corner. 
You know what I mean? It's a shame. I really do feel bad for him. And I feel bad for the family. And my, as I said, my thoughts, my heart go back to the family. And to all that community. Yeah. You know, people say, there's one case we're looking at where they say, I would not want my child to go missing here, right, in Tennessee. Your child goes missing in Tennessee, you're fecked because the police would don't bother looking, right? Right, now, I don't say that for Two Rivers Police, Manitowoc. Two Rivers Police, they never gave up. Never. The community never gave up. And the family never gave up. Right? So we're going to, I've got some uh, documents, which I want to go over tonight. But I want to show you, watch the video with you, when they inform us about the Elijah. I knew it was him. Because I checked on the missing children pages and all this lot. If any other child in any of those states around there had gone missing and that age of three year old and I couldn't find nothing. Um it was just too coincidental that this little boy was went missing and he was a uh, uh, skeletal remains were found six minutes drive away. Maybe, say, 10 at the most. Because it wasn't on the girl's scout land. It was on some other guy's man's land. Right? It wasn't on the girl's scout's land. It was somewhere else. Next door, I should imagine. Next door to that, I don't know. So, but, Katrina Barrett would know all that area because she used to live just across the road in a house not for long but she lived in a house just across the road from the Girl Scouts movement so she'd know that area and the land so anyway as I said we're going to look at the police I've got it on my Facebook page I've had to open up my new Facebook page because I gave up with Facebook they they literally closed my account and put it on hold because apparently I put something on there that went against their community rules I don't know what I tried appealing him no, wasn't having it so I thought you know what stuff you so I've opened a new one the link is in the description if anyone wants to come and join my Facebook page please do so because I do post a lot of things on there I post any videos on there I post updates of news reports on there everything my Twitter account as well I post on there I even go live on there on my lives so if you'd like to join me please come along and join me there if you're watching on replay please if you haven't already consider subscribing to the channel and hit the all button if you're a true crime junkie like me hit the all button because i follow Missing child cases and adult cases, cold cases, mass shootings and murder. You might want that mass shootings and murder are the same. No. No. Mass shootings is two plus. Right? And then you've got spree killings where they do it like they kill one person after another and another and another and they're dying over a, a very short period and they can kill quite a few people over a short period they call that spree killing so I will be I cover all I'll be looking at all them 
and Caucasus. And those street, uh, mass shootings and murder cases, like this now, Elijah Vu, should be upgraded to a murder because no way did he wander off on his own all that way. No way. He was took there. Something happened in Jesse Bang's home and they took his body there. Right? So, we'll find out later on. I'm not released anything about the autopsy, which they won't because it is a child. So, we'll see. So, let's just get me up here. Put me down here. There. Alright, so, let's watch this. Is this one? No. No, oh god's sake all right here we are also to those of you watching or listening in your unwavering concern and support for elijah has been greatly appreciated by all of us today we're holding this press brief oh god i mean my stream yard is playing up I don't know why. I can't see nothing. I'm going to have to go out and come back in. Hi oh, there, I'm back. Right, I'll put it back up again. Don't know what happened. StreamYard just went haywire on me, so I had to go out to come back in. All right. Let's continue, shall we? Briefing to provide you updates in regards to the search for Elijah Vu. Since the moment that we took the call on February 20th of this year for Elijah Vu being missing, Elijah has been our top priority and will remain our top priority. Because we are committed to open and honest communication with our community, we are holding this press briefing. Chief Ben Minert of the Two Rivers Police Department will be sharing important updates with you all. Minert's last name is spelled M-E-I. N N E R T. We will not be taking any questioning during or following the press briefing because we are already sharing all of the information that we are able to provide to you at this time. There will be a packet available for you containing the information that she will be sharing, and I will provide that to you following the press briefing. Chief Miner. Thank you all for being here. Uh, last Saturday, Sheriff Hartwig called me immediately upon learning his deputies were responding to investigate a report of skeletal remains found by someone in the town of Two Rivers. With night falling near, the entire area was secured while a variety of resources were gathered to investigate. Ultimately, a forensic anthropologist with the Wisconsin State Crime Laboratories was able to confirm a skull and bones as human remains. On Sunday, my staff assisted the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office, Department of Justice, Division of Criminal Investigation, and the Wisconsin Crime Lab with recovery of those remains and any associated evidence. 
The intentions of our team were to first notify family of the discovery and then alert the public. Prior to that, however, reports went out on social media and other platforms, some of which were false and most of which had yet to be confirmed. While we do feel it's important to share information with the public, our first priority is Elijah and the integrity of the investigation as well as communication with the family. These are the facts that I can share. The remains were found on private property by a person getting his land ready for the hunting season. This land was not on Manitou Girl Scout camp property, but rather a thick wooded area with heavy underbrush, just to the north of Manitou. This location is just over three miles northwest of where he originally was reported missing. This area had been searched several times, as had been reported by law enforcement searches, by private searches, by the landowner, by air, and with various search and rescue teams. Despite all those previous efforts and throughout different conditions and changing seasons, we continued searching and even had continued searches scheduled as early as next week. The remains found by the hunter and recovered by law enforcement were taken to the Wisconsin Crime Lab for DNA testing to identify the person. It is with a heavy heart that I announce to you today, those remains were identified as Elijah Boo. With that news and following this briefing, the Amber Alert will be canceled. As soon as Elijah was identified, we notified his family. I ask that you respect them and allow them to grieve. The area where Elijah was located is private property. And we ask that you respect the private property owner and avoid that area. This is not the outcome that we hoped for. The family's devastated, we're devastated, our community's devastated. I never met Elijah, but I watched that three-year-old boy bring out the best in this community. I can't thank the public and our businesses enough. Thank you, uh, sorry, DCI for continuing to lead this investigation, FBI for their support and our local state and federal law enforcement and fire departments as well as the numerous neighboring agencies. I'd also like to thank all the churches, schools, all the search and rescue groups, and our residents and the family members. Thank you to all that the, that the various city employees have done. The efforts of all of you and many others help bring conclusion to this phase of the investigation. What started out as a search for a missing boy is now a death investigation. Although we understand your desire for information, we can't share every detail and we must maintain the integrity of the investigation. We know the family and the community has a lot of, a lot of questions. This is a process that will take a great deal of time and we'll do everything we can in this investigation to answer those questions. Going forward, we'll continue to share updates provided from DCI and the Manitowoc County DA. We will receive them and we will continue to be your sole source of accurate information. Now that we know the location of where Elijah was located off Christie Bob Lane and Manitou Drive, we ask that anybody with any information, if you haven't previously provided it or you think it may be useful in this investigation to please contact law enforcement. Again, my assistant chief will provide you with the information on how to do so, um, if you can. And again, thank you all for being here. Chief, do you expect a death investigation or autopsy? Sorry, as a reminder, there will not be any questions. As chief said, if you have any information that you feel would be beneficial for this investigation, please contact Detective Lieutenant Glazer of the Two Rivers Police Department at 920-686-7200. Again, that's Detective Lieutenant.
Lieutenant Glazer, G-L-A-S-E-R, at the Two Rivers Police Department at 920-686-7200. As Chief Minert said, we too are devastated by this news. Elijah was a little guy, but he left a huge impact on all of us and he will not be forgotten. That will conclude the information we're sharing today at this press briefing. As a reminder, we will not be having questions at this time as we already shared all the information we are available. Well, can you can you schedule? Schedule? Is there an autopsy schedule? Is there an autopsy schedule? What's the reason for not taking questions? Have all of his remains been recovered? I do have the uh, press packets. If anybody would like one, it shares the information that Chief Minert provided and it's in writing for you. You can come forward and get those. You know when we should expect so that we're not bugging you, you know, when autopsy results will come. Right. So that was heart wrenching because did you hear Chief Mangha voice? You could see it in his face. You know what I mean? He was broken by that. He was he was really upset. And I've got to give it to that police force. I really have. They never gave up on that little boy. Not once. Not for one minute did they give up on that little boy. Whereas... Ah, I don't know if I'm going... I don't know if I've got a picture of them up here. I will put a picture up of where I was. Yeah. These two. These two pieces of... I can't even... Do even describe the words I want to say about these two. I can't. I just hope that whatever comes, karma comes their way. Big time. I really do. Because they could have put this police force was not going to give up. The community was not going to give up. The family was not going to give up searching for that little boy. And I'm sure someone said, it was in this case I heard them say, if he's going to be found at, at all, it will be when the hunting season starts. And who found him? A landowner, get a hunter, Getting his land ready for the hunting season. You know what I mean? And these two pieces of... Oh, I'm so mad when I look at them. I just want to punch the... Oh! Right. They could have took that pain away. And just said, they would have known that, that this, this little boy would be found. He would be found. One way or the other, he would be found. And it would have been better if they had come forward and said, look, he's here. This is where he is. Right, now, he did say it, the place. So I'm going to see if I can just find the area. No. I won't go Earth, I'll go Google Maps. Uh, let's look. Right, okay. Let's put this up. The screen so I can get those two pieces of shit off my screen. Uh, 
Uh, let's take them down. Uh, uh, that's what I want to say. Right? And he said somewhere, where is it? He said, Money Talk Drive. Let's have a look. Mount Tarraka Street. You know what I mean? Look at it. This is quite heavily. There. Look how heavy that is. How thick that bush is there. If it's anywhere around here. Yeah. Let's have a look. See if it'll give me... Come on. Right. I don't know if I've got the right place. I don't think I have. No, because I know it's a red boy. I know it's over this way somewhere. So let's have a look. Right. Luck Camp Manito, Manito, Manito. So it could be in this area. Because all the place were around here. But it wasn't on there, which is the first thought it was. It was not in here. Right. So it wouldn't be there because that's part of their land, I should imagine. So it could be there. I'm trying to find a road. But I reckon it's around about here somewhere around this area. Around this area. You know what I mean? Kisty Bob Lane. Rocky K line. No. I'm going to have to go back over that video too. There's Manito Drive. So could you be in here? Why? Because there's Manito Drive. Yeah. So it could be around here somewhere you know what i mean and what's this place you know what i mean it's looks quite bad what is it yeah it's raining this way Hard time. Because they said 
Mitty Cup Drive. And I know the police were all here. And there's some houses along here somewhere because Here they are, here's the houses. You know what I mean there? And the other houses. You know what I mean? You've got houses here. And somewhere around here, like she used to live. Two years ago, she lived somewhere around there. Only for a short while. But she lived around there. Right, with her daughter and with the little boy. So, Elijah would have only been about, what, one when she lived there? So he'd have only been a baby. Well, he still was a baby. He was three years old. I look at my granddaughter. She's three. I remember my two grandsons when they were three. You know what I mean? Those babies, they still are. Even though they're about come up seven years of age, they're still babies. <laughs> so, but she used to live around this way somewhere. One of the neighbours, someone who lives there, was saying how she used to live in one of them houses. So, to be honest with you, if she lived up this way, say she lived round here somewhere, that would make sense if his body had been found over this way. Yeah? Because this is done in... It says imagery 2024. So I don't know. Let's have a look. I'm not going to let me go in, is he? Yep. No, yep. yep. the roads don't go up there. The map doesn't go up there. So don't let me go in any further. Alright, we can go like that there. We, we can go around like that. I don't know what this place is here. But look at all this. This is great for hunting, isn't it, round here? And yet, yeah, this has been searched. But someone did say, if this little boy was going to be found, it would be found when the hunting season starts. Right. I'm now going to pull up some documents. Let's have a look. Uh, let's go into this first. So I can find it better this way. Right, this is Katrina Barrows, amended, right, amended criminal complaint, okay, so let's see if I'm getting a bit closer for you, so you can see it. Okay. Right. So as you can see, there's a name, a address. I suppose I could have blanked all that out, but I'm not going to. I ain't got the patience for her. It says the undersigned complainant being duly sworn states that the following complaint is true and correct. Count one. Chronic 
neglect of a child, specified time did not occur, PTAC, as a party to a crime. Right? The above named defendant on February, on or between February 12, 2024 to February 18, 2024, in the city of Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin, as a party to a crime, being a person responsible for the welfare of a child, victim child one, through her actions for reasons other than poverty, negligently failed to provide necessary care so as to seriously endanger the physical, mental or emotional health of the child. And the natural and probable consequences of this violation would be harm under 948.21, uh, brackets 3, close brackets, par A, B, C or D, Wisconsin stats. Although the harm didn't actually occur and the actor is guilty of chronic neglect, as she committed three or more violations under 948.21 within a specified period of time involving the same child <sighs> to section 948.215, blah, blah, blah. A class H felony and upon conviction may be fined not more than $10,000 or in prison not more than six years, or both. Six years. Well, let's hope this is updated again, shall we? Let's hope. Hold on. Just got to clean my glasses. Oh. Count two, obstructing an officer. The above named defendant on or about Tuesday, the February 20th, 2024, in the city of Two Rivers, Manitoba County, Wisconsin, did knowingly obstruct an officer. While such officer was doing an act in an official capacity and with lawful authority, obstructed officers, officers contrary to 946.41, a class A misdemeanor and upon conviction may be fined not more than $10,000 or in prison not more than nine months. Hmm. Oh, well, I think she'll be doing a lot more than six years and nine months so far. Obstructing an officer again. It's the same thing in other nine months or both. So she could get nine agencies. Seven and a half years so far. Right? But this is the next bit. Count four. This is the part that was updated. Neglect a child. Specified time, specified time did not occur. So at first, when she was charged, she was just charged with count one, count two, count three. And then count four. The above named defendant on or about Wednesday, February the 14th, 2024, in the city of Two Rivers, Manitoba Council, being a person reasonable for welfare of a child, 15 child two, that's the daughter, through her actions for, no, for reasons other than poverty, did negligently fail to provide necessary care as to seriously endanger the physical, mental or emotional health of the child and the natural and probable causes of this violation would be harm. 948.21 <sighs> It's a Class A misdemeanor. We only get nine months for this. Hold on, how can that be the same sort of thing as there, as it is for that? Yeah? Which you can get six years for that one. Or is that because this child has gone missing? But only nine months for this one. Anyway, probable cause. The complainant alleges he informed by the reports of Megan Clumpion, known to complainant to be a detective, the Two Rivers Police Department and Detective Lieutenant Jacob Glazer of the Two Rivers Police Department that the incident occurred in the city of Two Rivers, Manitoba County, Wisconsin. Right. The 
Based on information provided by Detective Columbian and Detective Lieutenant Glazer, Glazer, Glazer. on the 2nd of 20, 2024, the Two Rivers Police Department, TRPD, was notified by dispatch that Jesse Vang called 911 at 10.59am, reporting that he was babysitting a three-year-old child, victim. Vang reported that while watching the child, he fell asleep. When he woke up, the child child was missing. Law enforcement responded to, responded to Vang's residence at 3918 Mishcott Road, apartment 102 in the Rivers, Two Rivers, Manitoba County, Wisconsin, in an attempt to locate the victim. Law enforcement had been so unsuccessful in locating victim child one as of February 26, 2024. Right, my heart, this case has. Oh, God. Detective Ann Clumpian of the Two Rivers Police Department spoke with Vang at the residence at 3918 Miscott Road, apartment 102. Vang said he, he is in a relationship with victim child's mother, Katrina B. Barra. Vang stated that victim, victim child one has been staying with him recently. I'm not even going to call him by his name. Shit stated he has been trying to help Barra. Oh, I should say, shit stated that he's been trying to help shit correct victim child bad behaviour. Shit stated that he has been assisting with the care of victim for approximately one month, but not continuously. Shit stated that on date, today's date, he woke up with the autistic teenage son. How on earth has he got custody or even part custody of an autistic teenager? How on earth has he got this? I don't know if it's full custody or part custody, but how on earth has he been able to get that custody? You know what I mean? Autistic children are not easy to work, handle or work with. You've got to look at it from there. So... I really hope that lad never suffered as well. I hope his son has never suffered in his case. I really do. Right. Thanks, state, uh, state, shit, state, he has been trying to help, but she, uh, she helped his son while we're getting on the bus at approximately 7, 0, 7 30 hours. She stated, victim child when we still asleep after we walked his son out to the bus. <sighs> SHIT stated that he wrote victim child wrong up at approximately 0800 hours and brought him into the bedroom with him. Now, that changed because he said he woke him up and gave him breakfast and then he went to the bedroom. Vang stated that he shut the door and Vang fell asleep. Vang stated he woke up at approximately 1100 hours and found that victim child one was gone. Yeah, three year old is going to get out of that door, isn't it, with uh, two locks on and a chain. Door chain, yeah, one. Detective Lieutenant Glazer spoke with Barra. Barra stated the victim child one has been in the case of shit shit for approximately one week. She resides in the Wisconsin town. Barra stated she dropped off. Victim child one with six sheets on 2 12 24 and Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. She intended on victim one, child one, coming back to Wisconsin girls on Friday. Yeah, right. <laughs> Second of 20, 2024, DCI agent Neil Luffy, Luffy did speak with Katrina Byer and denied she was in the Manic Carrot County area on the 16th to the 17th. Detective Clumping is aware that I've been <sighs> Pardon me. To search, pursuant to search warrants, law enforcement did conduct forensic extractions of Jess Frank and Katrina Barrow's cell phones after they were consensually turned over to law enforcement. Based on analysis of these cell phones, specifically, lo specifically location data obtained, Law enforcement obtained information that contradicted Katrina Barrow's statement. 
that she had not been in the Manic Turk area from February the 16th to the 17th. Well, we know she's there on the 14th. Because it's Valentine's Day and they had to get their little snuggly, snuggly cuckoos and didn't they? Oh, yeah. Sick. Right, so she's there on February the 14th, we know that much. February 17th, 2024, where Vang tells Bao that he's angry that the victim child wrong overfilled his diaper with poop and pee. Well, what do you expect? You need to change his nappy when he's done it once, not leave it on for two days or more, maybe. We don't know. We don't know when you change them nappies. Right? And that Vang gave victim child wrong a cold shower. Oh, I do hope these guys in prison give him cold showers. Frank noted that fiction child one was clean, but scared. Oh, you're so proud, aren't you, Frank? So proud of that. Oh, he's clean, but he's scared. Detective Lieutenant Glazer spoke with Katrina Bowen. She stated that Jesse Vang was the enforcer of rules in the relationship and that was the reason for sending victim child one to stay with Vang. She discussed with him the limits of what discipline she did not want used. Other than, she, other than that, she is fine with whatever discipline Vang enforces. She gave examples of discipline, including praying, saying he was going, Oh, sorry, and going over four rules that victim child one is supposed to be memorising. At no point did she admit she was in the city of two rivers between the 12th, 2024 and February 2024, or had any face-to-face -face contact with victim child one. She said she was discussing behaviour issues with Frank around Thanksgiving of 2023. Now, I remember when this first came out, this case, right? And a so-called friend of hers turned around and said, Ah, oh, uh, Frank is only just showing up in her life two weeks earlier. Really? Really? This is in February. You're telling us he showed up at the beginning of February, right? Come, just coming to seeing his life at the beginning of February. Yet we know that she'd been speaking to him. When? When was it again? Thanksgiving of 2023. So that blew that guy out the water, didn't he? Don't stick up for people when they're telling you, oh, he's just come in my life. Don't trust them for their word. And don't say something that isn't true, which is going to come back and speak. Back, smack you in the face. Because that, that uh, came back and smacked that person straight in the face, straight away. Because as soon as he said that, I, went, I put a comment. I went, really? Explain to me then how she was talking to him in Thanksgiving 2023. Explain to me how, apparently, if he'd only just come into her life two weeks earlier, how... Um, Little Elijah had been going to Jesse Bang's house for, for a month, on and off, for the last month. So from January 20th to, to January, February 20th, he'd been going on and off to his house. That's longer than two weeks, mate. Never replied to that comment. Never once did he reply. I wonder if this so-called friend is going to go up to, in court now as a... A character witness for her. Oh, God, this is one trial I will be following. Even if I have to stop till 2 and 3 in the morning because of the time difference, I will be following this case. And if I've got visitors coming, no, they can go away. I'm, I'm on this case. I'm not getting distracted from this case. So if any of my family's listening to this, when this goes to court, don't come knocking. When you speak to me, phone me. Leave me a message. But don't come knocking. No, I don't mean that really. Sorry. Sorry.
So I didn't mean that either. Oh well, pick it all up in a minute. Right, so. Right, she said she was discussing behaviour issues with Vang around Thanksgiving of 2023 and he said she needed to try harder to stop the behaviour. Well, first of all, it's three years old, right? Has she not heard of the table twos or table threes? Yeah. Believe me, we've got that with my granddaughter, the table threes. Right? Has she not learned about potty training him and getting him on the toilet? Hmm? That may have helped his behaviour as well. Bower stated she wanted Fang to teach 15, 15 children, by example, how to be a man. Oh, he's a perfect example, isn't he? Fang is a perfect example of a man who only picks on children and women. Would he go up against a man his own age? Would he? No. He only picks on children and women. Yeah. Yeah, we know the sort he is. She said, taught, she said, the first time victim Wong had gone to stay with Fang with her, it was in January 2024. So, there again, how could she have just met him two weeks prior to her son going missing? Hmm? If that friend ever sees this video, I hope he does, or she does, or they do, whoever, whatever they want to be called, them, they, it, her, him. Whatever. I hope they are listening. So the past week was the longest time victim child Grant had stayed with Anne without her being there. Are you loving it, love? Detective Lieutenant Glasser said, while, talk, while talked about that this past week, she admitted she had been in two rivers on February the 16th. She said she left Wisconsin Dow at 6 or 7 p.m. and arrived in Two Rivers late at night. And we did show that time, and it takes about, about two hours, two and a half hours from where she was to his. I'm gone. Wisconsin Dow. Right, I think I've got the right place. Let's uh, have a look. Yeah. Right. Two hours, 44 minutes. Right. From Wisconsin Dales to his. So she left, say, 6, 7, say, 6, 30, like, 7, 30, like, 8, 30, like, 9 p.m. is 9, 15 ish, right? 9, 15 ish, she would have been in there. But uh, started, she said, blah, 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 blah. hold on. Uh, she admitted we being in February the 16th. She said she left the Wisconsin area around 6 or 7 p.m. and arrived in two rivers late at night. Well, I wouldn't say 7, 8, 9, 9, 30, quarter to 10 is late at night. Well, it is if you've got children, I suppose, yeah. Right. Glad to see she talked about this past week. She, oh, God, I keep going back on myself. She saw victim child wrong on the couch. couch. But he was tired. She's, he'd been standing up nearly all day. I don't blame the... Oof. She said she left early morning on February 17th. 
she was confronted about being in two rivers on a different day and she did not admit she was in two rivers on February 14th. No, she's not going to admit that because she left her daughter in the car that day. Yeah, they've got the messages that she was sending Barrett, uh, Vang, like Barrett was sending Vang about having to leave her daughter in the car so you could go up and have your little bit of nookie. Yeah, piece of SHIT. I think the mother, uh, uh, it's hard to, do, to decide who should have the mother of the year award. Should it be Jane Soto's mother, Elijah Vu's mother, or Sebastian Rogers' mother? It's hard to decide which one of them three gets the mother of the year, not award. River, two rivers. She said she left early February 17th. She was confronted about being in two rivers on February 14th. But uh, she did admit she was in two rivers on February 14th for a period of time and then went back up. Yeah, we know she was in two rivers. They've got the text messages. You can't deny that, love. On the 2nd of 20, 2024, Van consented to meeting with law enforcement at TRPD and agreed to a consensual interview. During the course of the interview, conducted by Detective Michael Herman of the Man Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office, Detective Herman also spoke with Jesse Van at the apartment prior to going to the Two Rivers Police Department. Frank made consensual statements in regard to his recent interactions with victim Charles Wong. Frank stated that victim Charles Wong is afraid of him. Oh yeah, he would be. He's three years old. Then corrected himself aside and stated that he respects me. No, he was afraid of him. You didn't... It wasn't a mistake that you said that. He stated that the put victim child wrong here was a punishment for his bad behaviour. Oh. They were trying to teach him how to be good here and good at home. Frank, indi Frank indicates that he's trying to make him understand that going home is like a privilege for him. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Piece of SHIT. Frank stated that victim child one was disciplined using timeouts. I don't think it was just timeouts. It wasn't just timeouts. It was not just timeouts. Uh, and I think it's just my opinion that night. When that mother, no, I'm not going to call her mother, when that piece of shit took a photo of Elijah lying on a bed with his eyes covered and bruises to his cheek, side of his face and chin and arm, had been beaten. Right? And I truly, this is just my opinion. Just my opinion. I don't think he was fed. I don't think he fed him. I think he probably died. I think, think that poor little boy's body just gave up on him. He's three years old. In eight days, he went through hell. In eight days. Right, we don't know what the, what he went through before he went there. We don't know how he was treated by his mother before he went there. Right? We don't know none of that. Right? <sighs> Listen to this bit. Rang reported that victim child one was in timeout for the majority of the time with Rang, as it was intended as a form of boot camp. Other than getting into things. Yeah. Right? 
I don't know how many times I told my seven-year-old grandson, my six-year-old grandson this weekend, do not mess with my plug socket on in my when my workstation is. I've come in several times yesterday and today, and he's pulled out all my lighting things, uh, the plug socket itself, because I've got one of them stand-up ones, right? That was on the floor. Right, my little uh, lamp light thing that I have, which is now in the living room, that gives off like, you know, the, um, what's that lighting you get in Iceland? Where you get all those beautiful lights in the sky. I've got a lamp, a light thing that does that. And it looks up. I've got to move something there because something is blocking it. My ferns are blocking it, but I don't know where to move my ferns to. But it's beautiful. I love it. Well, that was in here the other day, but it was on the floor when I come in. So I said to him today, he went to come in here and I said, right, I said, do not mess with anything on here or on my table. I even had my big, my ring light on. It said, oh, it just fell, just fell. No, it doesn't just fall. He's messing, right? And um, I said, if you're messing here again with any of my stuff on this table or on here, you will not be allowed in here again. And he didn't touch anything then. Because he knew I would stick to my word. It be, would have been stopped from coming in here. Not for good, just for like a few hours or for for the rest of today. It would have been stopped from coming in here. So we didn't touch nothing. Right. Intended as a form of boot camp. Other than getting into things, Frank was unable to identify specific bad behaviours. Well, I'm sure most mothers can identify bad behaviours, they can actually say, it's Mac the child, right? Or, he's been hitting his sister or things like that, yeah? Like, I'll tell you something today, right? My three-year-old granddaughter went to take this shield, Minecraft shield, off her brother. And he was using it, he had it on his arm, and he's pulling it away from her. So he just put his other hand over and tapped her hand to say, get off. Didn't hit her, he just tapped it. He just hit me. And his mum said, but he's trying to get his shield off him. Right? You know what she does then? She comes over and pinches him. I thought, that is so like my daughter used to do with her, with her brother. She used to pinch him on the side of the leg, so then he'd kick out and he'd get in trouble for hitting. And I said, that's not it, sweetheart, you don't do that. But he hit me, I said, yeah, but two wrongs don't make a right. Alright? So, Frank reported that the victim child wrong is not potty trained, which is the mother's fault, as I said before and that he is still wearing diapers. Frank advised that he changed victim diapers at least, at least, oh, this is so good of him, at least once per day. Yeah. And you all know how they pee and poop, these one, two, and three-year-olds. God, I know, don't even go there with my granddaughter, no, not going there, you know what I mean? On the evening of the 2nd and 19th, 2024, Fang changed victim Charles diaper prior to him going to bed at approximately 8 and 9 p.m. He then watched Ready Player One prior to putting him to bed. He stated that victim Charles One was not watching the movie as Fang put him in punishment. What for? What for? For pooping his nappy and you having to change it? For breathing? He stated that victim would stand in the corner or stand by the bed by me. Fang stated he gets pretty tired from... Now, listen, this is what I get. 
He gets pretty tired from, hmm, I guess, like, from standing too. Yeah. It's blank. He does not want to be mean to him, but he's trying to teach him to be more respectful. There's ways of treating it, teaching a child to be respectful. He was asked about February 1924 if he made fiction child grants down to, to stand to which is like, ah, oh, yeah, for like, probably like two to three hours. Oh, yeah, two to three hours, yeah. Van confirmed that the victim child grant stands for two to three hours without sitting. In the event that victim, tries, victim child grant tries to sit down, Van will say, oh. Want cold water? He then indicated his fine. It's not like his knees are shaking and about to fall over, you know. How sick is this person? How sick. Right. Where are we? On the morning of the 2nd of the 20th, Frank woke up at approximately 7.30 hours and prepared his son for school. At that time, he saw victim child one sleeping on the futon sofa in the living room. Frank took his son to the bus stop and locked the apartment door. Upon returning to the apartment, Frank found victim child one still sleeping on the sofa. He woke victim child one up. They ate breakfast. He reported that the victim child one ate some cereal, which had frosting on one side and wheat on the other, without milk. Then they went to Frank's bedroom, where victim child one was told to stand and pray near the foot of Frank's bed. What had he done wrong? You know what I mean? He'd just broken up and just had breakfast, so what had he done wrong? He did not change victim child's diaper as he was too tired. Oh my lord. Victim child one was not allowed to do fun things as he was in time out. Yeah, constantly, 24 hours a day unless he was asleep. When asked about any toys at the apartment, uh, which he received at Christmas, one toy which he received at Christmas time. If the time out do not work with victim child one, Fang stated that he would give him an ultimatum. Fang reported that the ultimatum was usually, do you want some cold water? Now that cold water is a shock on anybody's body, you know what I mean? <sighs> Fang reported that victim child one did not like cold water but did not know why. Did not know why. He did not know why this three-year-old did not like cold water. Well, just imagine yourself standing there and someone holding cold water on you. Hmm? Tell us how you feel. He denied following through with ultimatums. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. He followed through. When... Uh, he denied, he denied following when asked about what victim at while he was with Van State, pizza, noodle, cereal, and similar items. He stated that victim child one was still fed, bottle fed, and he was trying to get him to eat regular food. Okay, I'll give him that. He may not be the healthiest of foods, but at least he's trying to get him off the bottle. He was not unable to provide specific details as to the food. Yeah, because he never gave him any. He never gave him any food. Why? Because you'd be able to say, well, like, he would have pizza one night and then he had chips and other night and something else and other night. You'd know what food you cooked or given to a child. Fish fingers and chips or mash and fish fingers or whatever. Chicken nuggets. Oh. While Van was sleeping, he would lock the door to the apartment at the door knob, deadbolt, and with a security chain attached to it at the top of the door to keep victim child one from walking out the apartment. No, that wasn't from to keep victim child one from walking out. That was from keeping anyone from kicking the door in. Right? Because he's a known, he's in a gang, a, a gang, right? You can tell by the tax he's got on his neck. 
I think that's a, uh, a gang cat he's got on his neck. And they would be dealing. I'm not saying he did. I am not saying he did. I'm just saying that sort of gang would be dealing with um, trafficking, women, drugs, you name it. So those locks were on that door for security reasons, not to keep a child in, but to keep someone out. <sighs> Frank reported that on the evening prior to victim child Rongo missing, he had consumed three 12 amp Budweiser beers and one cyclobenzaprine as a sleep aid. Katrina Barrett and Jesse Vang's cell phones were reviewed by law enforcement, including text and Facebook messaging. February 13, 2024, at approximately 9.30pm, Katrina Barrett and Jesse Vang began discussing Katrina coming to Jesse's apartment for SEX. Jesse says that Katrina cannot see victim child Wong when she gets to the apartment and that victim child Wong can be placed in the bathroom while they have SEX. At approximately 10 12 pm, Katrina sends Wow, oh, she drives very slow or she left late and it's seven o'clock. Sends message to Jesse and victim child to can sleep in the car. Then at approximately 11.45 p.m. he says victim child Ron will be put in the living room and that Katrina needs to be quiet walking through. At 12.39 a.m. on February 14, 2024, Jesse asks Katrina to send her location so he knows when to put victim child Ron to sleep. <clears throat> That's scary. Jesse asked Katrina to send her location so he knows when to put victim child one to sleep. She left well later than 7 p.m. because it's saying it's 12.39 a.m. on February 14th. Right? Now, if she left at 7, 8, 79, 78, 89. She got there by quarter to 10. 10 o'clock the latest. And at 12.39 a.m., Jesse asks Katrina to send your location. They also discuss her shop stopping at Quick Trip in Manitoba while on the way. <sighs> On February 14, 2024, Katrina's borough cell phone arrived in two rooms at approximately 2.27am. Katrina asked Jess, is there any way to shut off the headlights completely? Jess responds, no, cannot sit, shut, sit off completely. Katrina messages, I can't find victim Charles 2 cell phone, but a cop just passed by, so I want to make sure she's good. Hmm. Victim child two is a child for which Katrina Barrett is a parent of. And Katrina Barrett indicates victim child two is autistic. <sighs> Katrina message, let me find her phone quick because I need to have some type of sound for her. Jesse message, probably thinks someone wrong is warming up. What was that? Jesse message probably thinks someone is warming up. Katrina responds, it's not worth the risk. I'll leave it off for a bit, then turn it on again. Jesse said, okay. She messaged, she found the phone, but it was dead. She messaged she would leave her phone in the car. She questions whether to leave her phone on, but mute it around 2.40 a.m. Hmm. She also messages she should stay warm for a bit, right? What should stay warm? Oh, the car. 
respond to Gabriel. At approximately 3.13 am a photograph was taken and the GPS indicated she was at 3918 Mishcock Drive, Two Rivers. The photograph shows victim child Wong laying down on a bed. Victim child Wong had a blindfold over his eyes, appears to have bruising on his jawline and neck on the left side, as well as bruising on his upper left arm. That's probably from where he's grabbed him, you know what I mean? Katrina Barra confirmed that she took the picture and later deleted it around for Why was she taking a photo of your son in that state? Katrina Barra's phone leaves two rivers at approximately 4.30 a.m. So she was there 2 to 3, 30, 40, 2, 40, 3, 40, 3, 40. So she was there for two hours. Two hours. Uh, the temperature for two rivers on February 2014 was 27 degrees Fahrenheit and the high temperature was 36 degrees. In a review Facebook messenger message between Katrina Barrett and Jesse Van, officers located a photograph taken on February the 15th, 2024, at approximately 8.24 p.m. showing victim Wong, child Wong, standing in a corner in a diaper only. Hands appear to be in praying pray position and the diaper looks full. It appears to have been taken at Jesse Van's apartment. The phone records further indicate that Katrina Bay returned to the city of Manitowoc on February 16, 2024, at approximately 11.01 p.m. She called Jesse Vang's phone about 11.15 p.m. and went into Quick Trip store to purchase items, which was confirmed by surveillance video. At approximately 11.21 p.m., Katrina Barra texted Jesse Vang's phone. Uh, uh, I'm put him to sleep. Jesse Vang responded, OK. That must be put into bed. Katrina Barra phone arrive, arrives to Jesse Vang's apartment around midnight. At approximately 12.30 a.m. on February 2017, 2024, Katrina Barra and Jesse Vang's cell phones moved to the city of Manitowoc. Ah. Oh. Right, so they go out, right, they meet up about what, about 11.20pm, and just over an hour later their phones moved to the city of Manitoba at approximately 12.50am. Jesse Van went to source his bar in the city of Manitowoc and went inside by himself. This was confirmed by a patron of the bar. Their phones separate for about an hour. During that time, Katrina Barra travelled to the quick trip located at 213 South Road in the city of Manitowoc. Officers were able to review surveillance video. In the video, Katrina Barra can be seen sitting in the driver's seat of the vehicle. There is no child seen in the vehicle. At Approximately 1.45am, Katrina is seen making purchases inside the Quick Trip store alone. At approximately 1.55am, Katrina's phone travels to Jesse Vang's location and we return back to Jesse Vang's apartment in Two Rivers. At approximately 5am, Katrina Barra leaves Two Rivers. On February 16th, 2024, victim child 2 has been taken care of by a person in the Wisconsin Dells area. Right, so the daughter was still in Wisconsin Dells while she's travelling around. Right? Between the 16th and 17th, yeah. Uh, Victor Child Wong was in two rivers and was supposed to be under the care of Jesse Vang and Katrina Barra. Law enforcement has been unable to locate any at Wong. Anyone other than Jesse Vang or Katrina Barra who cared for the child on February 16th consented. 
On February 18th, 2024, at approximately 4.36am, Jesse Bang messages Katrina, I've told you to trust you, me. I'm, I make sure he hates me being here. He hates me and being here. She responded, don't want him to hate you, just fear you. Jesse responded, it's okay. Someone's had to be the bad person. Katrina message, I know, but either way, act. he can fear you and respect you. Jesse message, he did fear me, but he didn't respect me. Now I'm making him respect me. You know what I mean? That poor child. But I don't see how they're going to be able to say how he died. If his body just gave up, right? And all they found was skeletal remains. Yeah. I don't see how they're going to be able to find a cause of death. I really don't. So. But that's just one. Just one of the files I've got on those two pieces. Right? And the fact that I wouldn't mind just a few weeks ago. She was given permission. Oh, well. She was given permission by a judge to have visiting rights to see her daughter on the supervised visits. The daughter who she who is autistic. And she found, oh, I'll just leave her in the car for two hours, even though it's cold outside, and the car won't be that cold. Right? You know, she should never have been allowed that in the first place. I've been going, no, you tell us where your son is, and then we'll think about letting you see your daughter. That was their bargaining power with them, was that you tell me where your son is, and we'll let you see your daughter. But they didn't. Unless the judge overruled it and said, Yeah, let us see your daughter. Why not? Oh, it's okay, Miss Day. She's uh, she only just managed to get rid of her other child. So, yeah, we'll just let her keep seeing her other daughter. Why not? You know what I mean? Okay, they had no proof. Right? That they like, don't anything with Elijah. But help. Right? Who was he last with? Jesse Vang. Who was a disciplinary? Jesse Vang. Who agreed to all of this? Katrina Barra. Who's the mother? Katrina Barra. So they're both as complicit as each other. And if, like I said, I I think, my just my opinion, that that poor little boy was beaten, was starved, right? We don't even know. Perhaps he caught an infection for not getting his bum changed. Like, you know what I mean? For a uh, nappy rash or nappy sores. He could have got an infection. You know, if, if all I've got is skeletal remains, I'm not going to have any heart, no kidney, no lungs, nothing to do any tests on. Because that would have all gone. Like, have no blood work to do any blood tests or anything. No stomach contents.
So I don't know what they're going to be charged with for. It should be murder. Well, he said it's now a murder investigation, a death investigation, not a murder, a death. He's not gone as far as to say murder. He's, got, he's just said it's a death investigation. Because, like I said, if it's skeletal, they're going to have, unless it's where they've strangled him and his highness bone is not in con intact and they can prove it's strangulation, then it would be a murder charge. But otherwise, they've just got skeletal remains. What are they going to charge him with? They've got no blood, no stomach contents, no heart, no kidney, nothing. And I, I just think what that you know, poor little boy went through in the last eight days. It's just unbelievable. I think his body just, unless they did some really, really bad. But as I said, they're not going to have any proof if it's just skeletal remains. Not, there's not going to be any proof. And did they bury him and dig a, an animal, dig him up? You know what I mean? For the remains to be found like there was. Do you think an animal's come along and dug him up? So we'll, we'll have to wait and see now, see what happens in this case. But I really do think there should be some form of a murder charge, be it second degree. I'd like to see full, full murder, first degree. You know what I mean? But I think they're going to find it very hard to do a first degree murder, I really do. This little boy didn't just wander you off on his own, all that way, and die. No, he didn't. He would have been seen. They had search parties out the same day looking for that little boy. Right. And to get to where he's got to go, that one road, this road here. Right, let's have a look. You know, Oshkosh, right? Uh, my son's aunt, she was an this and she used to buy him all Oshkosh clothes. You couldn't get it in the UK at the time. You could only get it over in America. Oshkosh. Right, let's find where are we? Right. Oh, I'm back out, back out. See where I'm pointing? I'm going, I'm going to put it upon them. Yeah. I'll put it back up. Put it back up. She used to come this way, or she could go, is that a long way to ease it? Let's have a look. Is that a shorter way? I think, right? I think she used to come down this way to go to theirs rather than go along that road and round. Right? Because there's Soto. Right? And. Um. Keeping that in mind. Keep this area in mind. 
right? I think she would come down this way. If she was coming to his, she would come down this road up to here. Oh, come on. Oh, get off. Uh, she will come down that road anyway, down here. Right. Down to that. Oh, God. Down this road. Down here. And along there. Right, now. This road, I know. I would someone if this little boy I come on. come on okay right you telling me this little boy of three year old could walk all about this road all about this road Right, not going to happen. A three-year-old, no. So he was took there, and I think something happened, if not on the 19th, maybe this 18th. But something happened in that house. Right? Where that little boy just died. Well, I think his body just gave up on him. Been made to stand three hours. I think he's been made to stand a lot longer than three hours. I don't believe he was feeding him like he said he was. He wasn't changing his nappy, so I can't see him giving him a bowl of cereal. Can you? So... I'm not surprised me if he's dehydrated as well. But they do not know if it's just skeletal remains. What can they find from skeletal remains as proof of death? You know what I mean? It'd be hard to say. Right? It'd be hard to say. See, we went all round this river, right from up here, and I was saying, if he was in the water, he was just showing up, and on his banks, he'd have been caught here. You know what I mean? That's why I knew he wasn't in the river. I knew he wasn't in the river. Because it would have been found sooner. And I, I'm, anyway, I'm glad he's been found. Because now the family can put him to, lay him to rest. Where he should be. Well, he shouldn't be even be there. He should be with his family. Having fun. Enjoying life. Going to the park. You know what I mean? Going for days out, playing catch and things like that. You should be doing all the little things, all the things that boys love to do. Kicking a ball around. I don't know, I don't know, but they play soccer, don't they, America? But football is not football to me, not over there. It's more, your, the American football is more a bit like our English rugby. I would be players don't carry all wear all that package equipment. <laughs> but um I'm just I think I would it would have always hit me 
knowing knowing that, you know what I mean? That he was found somewhere round. I think it was somewhere round here he was found. Because they said a road, and I can't remember what the other road was, might have been this road. I don't think it was that road. And I know, oh God, I know this is the Girl Scouts area, but that could have been the area he was found in this area. You know what I mean? But then again, you could have been found in this area up here. But I know the place around here, situated around here somewhere. Right. So, it had to be over this way. We all thought, we said, we was told it was here. But this is the Gil, Gil Scouts land. Right, and this is the neighbouring land. So I'd say his body was found somewhere around there. Because look, look how thick it is. May not be, look that big an area, but when you walk with something like that, that's a big area. That's a hell of a big area to walk through and to try and find disturbed ground or anything, you know what I mean? It wouldn't be easy. I mean, just walking through that little area. So, anyway, I like I said at the beginning, my heart and my thoughts go out to the family and also to the community and to Two Rivers Police, where not one of them, the police, the community or the family ever gave up on this little boy. Never gave up, not like his mother and her partner. They gave, they didn't want him, they gave up, you know what I mean? So, I'm going to leave it at there. As I said, it's only a short one, but I say short, it's still over now. Still like nearly two hours long. But I'm going to leave it there. And if I get any, I'll just check, see if there's any updates. All right. Because it'll be around about this time. But I don't think there will be. I think all updates now will come through tomorrow, if anything. Yeah, we've got a timeline here of something. Let's have a look. Right, let's have a look. All right. Here's a timeline. February 12th to the 18th, Elijah Vu's mother drops him off with her boyfriend. Elijah's mother, Elijah's mother Katrina Bell, 31, dropped Elijah off at her boyfriend's. Jesse Wang's home in. Which we know, we know all that. All right. So, February 20th, Elijah reported missing. Amber Alert issued. We know that Amber Alert has been taken off. All right. He said, he last seen Elijah around 8 a.m. Yeah, because he went to sleep. No, he didn't. No. Elijah wasn't in that house that morning. He was not in that house that morning. 23rd February, Katrina Baron just rang charged. I know those arrested. Like, I know um, Jesse Vang was arrested on February 20th on the evening. And he, the mother was arrested in the early hours on the 21st. Q 
criminal complaint released FBI office reward on the February 26th. Yeah. See, it says here, during his time with Elijah Vang, 39, admitted to using harsh disciplinary methods, including making Elijah stand for hours and giving him a cold shower. So, that wasn't just part of the punishment. There's other disciplinary punishments he got as well. And she denied being in the area. Yes, because you killed your son. Sorry, you put your son in the hands of that guy and let him do whatever he wanted, treat him however he wanted to. So you're just as bad. The investigation with revealed abusive behaviour and neglect, leaving, leading to suspicions of foul play. Yeah, all there's definitely foul play involved. March the 5th, vehicle of interest identified by police. Search continues. March the 7th, Barra faced additional faces, charges that should be. That was because They'd seen the text messages between her and Vang on February the 14th when she left her daughter in the car. March the 18th, Elijah's blanket found. Well, it was actually found a few days after he went missing, but they never said anything because they needed to wait to get tested for DNA and all that lot first. Fang received additional charges that got amended to chronic child neglect charges. So he had the same charge, chronic child neglect, as the mother did. Barra pleads not guilty on March 22nd, guilty as shit. Fang pleads not guilty, guilty as shit. <laughs> Sorry. August the 25th. Community celebrated Elijah's fourth birthday. As the search continues, Elijah Fourth Birthday was celebrated at a community event in Appleton. Two Rivers Police shared the event on his Facebook saying it wanted to assure everyone that this is a to- le- this is a leg- legitimate event for Elijah. Yeah. September the seventh. And that day, August the twenty-fifth. Right? was actually I think six months to the to the date that Elijah went missing. It, no, Elijah went missing on the twentieth, so it's look like his, I think his birthday was on the August the twentieth. So Human remains found by Deer Hunter September 7th. Deer Hunter discovered skeletal remains in a remote wooded area about three miles from Vang's home. The hunter was getting his property ready for the hunting season when he discovered the remains and called. But you see, that area had been searched time and time, two times before. You know what I mean? September the 13th, which was a Friday. And what did I say about Fridays, 13th? Not good days. DNA testing by the State Crime Lab confirmed that the remains found by the deer hunter belonged to Elijah. I wonder if that deer hunter will get the reward. It should. I think he should get all of that reward, the reward by the FBI, the reward by Crime Stoppers, and the reward for donations. He should get that one anyway. 
where people was donating to, through whatever means, and it was set up by Two Rivers Police, I believe, and they raised 15000 in with money. Authorities announced that the Amber Alert was cancelled and the case has shifted from a missing person investigation to a death investigation. Why don't they just say a murder? Because this little boy didn't just die because, oh, I'm just going to die. He died because of something happening in that home, either by the way he was treated or something. Frank is due in court September the 27th. Bow's next court date is October the 22nd. We'll see if that changes. We'll see if that changes. We will be there. I will be there on those two dates. Right? Which means I'm going to have a couple of late nights. Because I'll have to... I'll just get asleep in the afternoon. So I'm going to have a few hours sleep in the afternoon and then come on alive later on the night because of the time difference. So, but I will be covering that. Because look, that's who we're here for. That beautiful little boy. Three years old. And she wanted him to be a man. He's three years old. All he wanted to do is kick a throw ball, play with a train set and his trucks and things. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, he didn't have any of those things, did he? He didn't have anything like that to play with. He had one toy to play with, which he got at Christmas time. One toy. And he wasn't even allowed to play with that. Because he was in timeout all the time. Constantly in timeout. I think his body just gave up on him. What with the beat- beatings, probably not being fed properly. Probably not getting uh, fluids. Being beaten, being ill-treated. Made stand for hours on end. His body just gave up on him. I really do believe that. That's just my opinion. I wish we could have found him sooner. So then we could have found out definitely how he died. Right? But we know he didn't walk that way. And just his body just go, I oh, can't walk no further and collapse and die. We know that didn't happen. He's three years old, he's not going to walk that far. And especially not be, without being seen. So once again, my thoughts go out to the family and the community and the two brothers police. I believe they've done a fabulous job on this case. I wish there was a lot more police around like this police force. I think some lessons could be learnt by some other counties on how to do searches. You know what I mean? They never once stopped the families searching. They encouraged the families and the community to search. Right. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not sure. I think I've got a little video. Hang on, I'm just going to see. I think this might be... No, that's in your voice. Sorry. Um, so, 
we will remember him. And just know that he's not in pain no more. We gotta remember just keep that in mind. He's not in pain no more. He's gonna be laid to rest properly by his family that loved him. And he's not in pain no more. Hang on, man. I'm gonna leave it at that. Until tomorrow, I'll be back tomorrow. Until next time. Stay safe. And you've got, if you've got little ones, even if they're growing up, give your child a hug. Let them know you love them. Because you never know what the next day brings. You never do. So until, until next time, take care.